So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the initial CorelDRAW workspace setup. Now, you don't absolutely have to follow these instructions, but it's recommended that you follow along and reconfigure your workspace, as we're going to show you, so that your workspace exactly mirrors the workspace that we use in all of our video demonstrations. So with that said, let's go ahead and create a new blank document. And the first thing we're going to do is get rid of our document palette. And then over here on the right hand side, we're going to get rid of hints. Now I should point out that your interface may look slightly different than what you're seeing here on the screen, because what you're seeing here on the screen was the original factory settings. So you may have modified your CorelDRAW workspace already. But what I'd like you to do is go ahead and follow these instructions, because I think it will enhance your productivity. And of course, it'll be easier to follow along the video instructions because then your workspace will exactly mirror the workspace that you're going to see in the video demonstrations. So let's go ahead and close out our hints. You see that little X there, get rid of hints. And then you'll see our object manager there. And then to the right of that, you're going to see the default color palette. Now, this is something that uh, has bugged me for years and years. Um, I don't like this color palette. So I'm going to close that one out and come up here to the window menu and choose color palettes and I wish the default was RGB or we could set the default but we can't so um, there's our RGB palette it always throws it over here to the right because it thinks that's where we want it um, I don't like it over there so I'm gonna just right up here at the top drag it all the way down here to the bottom I just think it makes more sense down here um, it's easier to get to than way over here to the right hand side of the screen um, so now with that RGB color palette in place we need to open up some additional dockers that we use that house some of the various tools that we use um, in our rhinestone design. So under the window menu, we can come down to dockers and look at some of the various dockers we have available. Um, our, we do use our shaping docker quite frequently, so we'll go ahead and open that one up. Go back to Windows dockers and take a look at some of the others. Contour docker might be nice to have. The blend docker would be nice to have. And the artistic media docker. These are all things that we'll be showing you how to use at a later point. Um, and let's look at some of the various other dockers. Um, the envelope docker is another one that we do use occasionally. Uh, typically we'll only open that on an as needed basis. Join curves. Um, we will be demonstrating that docker later. Not something we actually need to open right now. And you know, anytime we're looking for a various set of tools, this is all the various dockers that are available to us. Now, the only ones that we're really concerned about making sure that we use all the time is the shaping docker, the contour docker, the blend docker, artistic media, and of course the object manager. Now, Corel did something kind of strange. It put other dockers in other places and then doesn't even call them dockers. <laughs> so I don't know. But under the tools menu, if you come down to macros, you're going to see. Um, a macro manager which essentially is a docker. Um, it's a macro manager docker where we would actually access our easy stone and other macros that maybe uh, we have created. So there's our macro manager docker and then there's two more dockers that we do use under the text drop down there's the character formatting docker and the paragraph formatting docker. And now you can see all the various dockers that we have open here on the right hand side. And because we have so many dockers open, when I click on this little arrow, see that little bitty arrow down here? It will give us a list of all the available dockers because it can't actually show them all. So we, then we can pick from the list which docker we want to work with. And of course, most typically, we're going to be working with our object manager docker, so we always want to have that visible. Um, or at least we know how to get to it. Uh, when we can't see it. It's just from this drop down list. Alright, so that is all of the various dockers that we're going to be using and that's pretty much it for the initial CorelDRAW workspace setup. Now we may be doing a little bit more work later on and customizing CorelDRAW a little bit further but for the basic setup of following the video instructions those are the changes that we recommend that you make.